Now I'd like to give the floor to Larry, who's going to do the financial report. So I forgot to say at the beginning regarding the vote, because it was unanimous, so it didn't really matter, but there are three members of the permanent section who are not present and who, who have delegated their vote. Caramela have given it to Kamachika. There is Patrick, who is Ebue, who is, has delegated his vote to Jose Pandian. And there is Elido, who's given a dele delegated his vote as well. So just so that you know that there are people who have, uh, have uh, delegated their vote in the permanent section. Oui, euh, bonjour, confrère et consoeur. Il y a deux points sur de, de, sur le l'ordre du jour aujourd'hui. Le, les comptes 2018 et la gouvernance financière, la liste, je, je propose, il n'y a pas beaucoup de temps, mais nous, nous avons beaucoup de travail à faire, que nous allons traiter la question de la, de la liste des sur la gouvernance financière en vendredi, si vous voulez. Donc maintenant, on va parler, parler seulement des comptes euh, audités pour 2018. Les, sur les comptes euh, certifiés. Euh, donc, euh, il s'agit de la loi française avec le, dans le but de, de regarder les comptes certifiés pour 2018. Ici, euh, vous approuvez, nous allons soumettre euh, les comptes au, à, à le comité, au comité exécutif qui euh, se réunira demain. Donc les comptes ont été certifiés selon la règle euh, avec un commissaire aux comptes externe selon la loi française et un certifi, certificat a été nous est parvenu. On a invité le commissaire aux comptes, M. Opar, de, de, de venir aujourd'hui et demain, mais malheureusement, il n'a pas pu euh, venir. Mais demain, je, je vais lire ce, son rapport euh, au, dans la réunion. Mon, le rapport de trésorier général a été envoyé avec les comptes et avec les, les documents financiers, on a essayé cette année de demander euh, d'envoyer de, les, les documents avant la réunion et j'espère que vous l'ayez reçu et que vous avez eu la chance de les, de les lire. Je propose de regarder les comptes 2018 euh, dans le, avec le format habituel, avec les chiffres. Mais les chiffres ont été validés euh, dans, les, dans les comptes certifiés. J'aimerais aussi répondre aux, aux questions lors de la présentation ou au, au final, comme vous, vous voulez. Donc, on a commencé avec l'objectif d'avoir un budget équilibré en utilisant les ressources disponibles pour soutenir le plan stratégique. Mais en fait, on a eu un excédent, euh, plus, un excédent plus important que prévu. Euh, il s'agit de 156 000 euros, un excédent. Cela grâce à deux raisons principales. En premier lieu, les recettes de l'année ont été plus élevées que prévu dans le budget. Euh, 1,66 million. Et les dépenses ont été réduites 
Et il y a des écumenisants à, à droite. CGI annual meeting, the cost of the international structure uh, and the Paris office expenses. They were the most significant areas where uh, savings against budget occurred. So I'll deal with some of these individual items now. Um, the makeup of the income, as you see, it's mainly the contributions from councils. It's the biggest single item. Um, and I'll just also, uh, we had an income from investments. So I'll, I'll deal with both those items. The um, income from councils, obviously, the Concordat countries, as usual, uh, dominate. Uh, and there was an increase in the contributions from the Concordat countries during the year. Uh, other countries, as you know, make a modest contribution, but that also increased somewhat. And um, I know if you were here yesterday, Renato spoke about the number of countries that have, have not been able to contribute. And um, speaking to some of the ITVPs, there are sometimes reasons for that. Uh, banking arrangements and the cost of bank fees being, being one of them, particularly if you're sending only a small contribution. So that while there are some 80 countries who don't, do not contribute at all to the CGI, there are good reasons in case of some of them. Um, you see there the Concordat contributions. Some countries have kindly increased by the recommended 2% for inflation that we have been uh, requesting con countries would consider. Uh, and overall, the, um, the amount uh, is higher than, uh, than, than budgeted. Uh, 1155, 1121 rather compared with 1108. Um, just for your interest, this is the makeup of the, uh, the investment income. There's a number of uh, pluses and minuses. The bank fees and the taxes, 13,000 cost. The taxes, incidentally, include the taxes on the capital gains on our bonds. There are some capital losses encouraged. That generally happens where uh, bonds mature at a, uh, a, a, pr a, pr a price lower than we have paid. And then we made significant capital gains uh, in 2018, and then the interest on our savings account, resulting in a net gain of 12,000 uh, for, for the year. I'd be happy to come back in any of these figures if you wish later. Uh, this is the kind of the board section of the, uh, of the accounts. Uh, and I should say, incidentally, that at our board meetings three or four times a year, we produce these management accounts for the board members. So uh, that's the various board members and their areas of responsibility. The first list, long list, is uh, that which Renato looks after. Uh, then there's the two items coming under Joseph, and then the, the Secretary General, uh, the rule and aggregations. Uh, I'll just deal with the first item, the Brasilia office, because it has given rise to a certain interest. Um, these are the costs of Renato for the year 2018. Uh, I draw your attention, uh, which we also spoke about at the board in November, that the, um, the amount is some about 10,000 over a budget. And this is for the very good reason that Renato undertook seven trips to Africa countries, as you see there. And also, while he was there, made uh, donations, which are down here, totaling 5,000 to the, uh, the countries that he visited. So this is, obviously it's invaluable for a country to receive a visit from the President General. So we're very happy to see uh, that expenditure in 2018. Uh, the other item of Renato's expenses, to just to mention it, 
for completeness is the small office that he has in Brasilia, which cost a total of 13,884. And again, this was reported to the uh, board at the November meeting. Uh, the, nothing very particular. There was an intern um, uh, employed for most of the year at a very modest cost, and there is a rental of the, of the office of 3609. Uh, just for your interest, the cost of board meetings, and this was the smaller board, so it will be now higher when there are 13 members, uh, just takes about 17,000 per board for f up to now. So we, we meet really not more than three times a year because it's now quite ex expensive between flights and uh, hotel costs and so on. Um, the CGI annual meeting, this was the meeting in Salamanca, and this is one of the reasons why we did better than budget last year, because there was a very good cost of 80, 84,000 euros, uh, which is considerably less than the uh, previous year, which was in, in Paris. So that's a saving for us. And Paris office general costs were down. Um, Partly because personnel, there were lower number of staff during 2018, and the uh, actual costs of uh, running the office, the utilities and taxes and various things like that, were lower than, than budgeted, with the result that there was a total saving in Paris office costs in 2018 of 65,000 euro, quite a significant amount. Um, this is just a detail of the, uh, of the makeup of the Paris office costs. Uh, you can see wages and salaries are the main item, obviously. Social charges uh, being in France are very, very heavy. Uh, and uh, the other costs you would expect, the, just mentioned the translations and consultants are it's quite an expensive cost. And uh, maintenance has been lower than, than budgeted. So that gives you a further breakdown, really, of Paris office. Uh, here we come to the structure, the expenditure on the structure. Uh, the two deputy vice president, generals, one for training and formation, and, and the other for the structure. And um, we have, uh, sorry, um, it's a significant amounts. Uh, we uh, had allocated more to the training uh, area. That, that re reflects the meeting in Madrid for the training coordinators that took place. Uh, towards the end of 2018. Uh, also, there was more expenditure on youth, youth, youth uh, delegations. Uh, the ITVPs and coordinators uh, higher than, 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 uh, than budget, but very well spent. And the regional funds uh, and assemblies I'll give you a breakdown of that in a moment. Uh, SSV plus here was underspent, uh, saving of 14,000 below budget, but I expect that this may not be the case this year. And uh, there were some savings in this, in this area here of, of commissions and so on. The other commissions here relates to the canonical commission, uh, which... Um, Cost of five, four, nine, eight. Uh, so overall, in the in the structure, the expenses of the structure were a million uh, compared with budget of one one three two, a saving of one hundred and twenty thousand. So overall, the costs that I have described result in a um, in a in a surplus of one hundred and fifty six thousand compared with a 
a budgeted surplus of 17,000. Um, the breakdown of the, uh, the coordinator's expenses, just you may be interested in seeing that. Uh, Africa is the largest amount, three territories in Africa. Uh, uh, as I say, a total of, of 69,000 was uh, available compared with a budget of 63. Uh, these were the regional events and assemblies that occurred that we financed during uh, 2018, uh, Mozambique, uh, Central African elections. And the, the largest item there was the of course, I beg your pardon, of course, yeah, Mike. The, um, the, lar the largest item there was the FAMVIN uh, youth meeting in Panama, to which we contributed 20,000 euros. Uh, this is the expenditure on SSV Plus in 2018. Uh, a range of, of activities. Supporting elections in the Congo, uh, strengthening in, in Togo, uh, the new conference in Albania, strengthening in uh, Honduras, some legal fees that we financed in Panama, the new conference in Cayman, also Cape Verde, and uh, some issues in Uruguay. So there's a mixture there in SSV Plus between new conferences and strengthening of, 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 of uh, the society in, in certain countries. Just moving to the balance sheet, um, in, in the light of our earlier discussion, you'll be interested to know that of that figure of 2.75 being our, our fixed assets, approximately 2.6 million relates to, to Rue de Londres. There is a small uh, item of 40,000 for a, a house that we still own in, um, in Kharkiv in the Ukraine, uh, but uh, the bulk of that figure there is in respect to Rue de Londres, as I say, approximately 2.6. Uh, the, the investments you see there have more or less same same as, as the previous year. Uh, the general reserves, which was one of the most important figures on the balance sheet, has increased, reflecting the surplus for the year. They are, these are the unrestricted funds of the of the CGI. Uh, that figure there, members' country funds, that represents the contributions that countries made to the initial purchase of Rue de Londres some 15 or so years ago. Um, these are the dedicated funds, the personnel fund, for, which are obliged under French law to retain. So solidarity funds is in SIAD, and you'll see they have been increasing quite a bit, reflecting partly disbursements of what was received for emergencies and so on, but also maybe reflecting that we need to uh, increase contributions to, to, uh, to FIS. And this is the, um, the cash position at the end of 2018. The, um, these are our, our own funds, and these are the SIAD funds, a combination of the FIS and other emergency funds. Just to give you a quick makeup, although more will be spoken at a later time about SIAD, but uh, th that's the composition at the end of the end of December. The um, just under 900,000 in FIS. And then there were specific funds of 912,000 in these various uh, countries. The biggest items would be Kenya, which is a trust, the uh, Haiti, which is uh, an issue that 
always comes up before the CIAD how to find ways of getting funds securely to Haiti. And then there is, the, of course, the Philippines, the large appeal, which is, which is reducing. So, so that, uh, I think, concludes the um, explanation of the accounts for 2018. I'd be very happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Microphone is coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, Larry, two comments and a question. <clears throat> the first comment is I, I really want to thank you and Lillian. Uh, for the fine job you do with the um, with the accounts, having served as National Treasurer of the U.S. for many years, uh, I know how challenging and frustrating <laughs> it can be in, in working with the budget. So I really want to just thank you both thank for you. the work that you do. Uh, the second comment, I think it's important for the permanent section to know this. After a January visit this year to the uh, Phoenix Archdiocesan Council, Phoenix, Arizona, they made, that council made a commitment to increase our President General's travel fund by $20,000 to give him the ability to visit more, more councils. Uh, and Renato expressed his desire, as much traveling as he does, he expressed a desire to uh, try to visit as many councils as he could. So the uh, Phoenix Council, which is arguably the largest archdiocesan council in terms of money, in the world uh, readily agreed to supplement his budget by $20,000. So uh, I, I hope we put this in the record that I want to thank the Phoenix Council for uh, increasing. And the, the question is, um, I hate bank fees because bank fees benefit no one but the banks. But I understand it's a necessary evil. But can you explain the reason or reasons why there was such an increase in the bank fees from last year to this year? Yeah, it's, it, the figure includes taxes on capital gains. So it's um, not only bank fees. And I'll see if I can get back to it. Oh, well, it's the first, that, that first figure there includes uh, taxes on capital gains. Now this, in this year, compared, we made significant capital gain. So there is tax to be paid on that gain, which is in that figure. So that's the main reason for the increase. Thanks, Mike. Sorry. Um, hello, <clears throat> Larry. As uh, one who's soon to cease being the National Treasurer of Australia, I'd like to echo Mike's comments. <laughs> I understand the position quite well. Um, you showed a reserve of about, a, a, essentially a discretionary reserve of about one and a half million euros, plus there are various non-discretionary reserves as well. Of that one and a half million euros, how much in your view represents a prudent level of reserve necessary to retain and how much of it is funds that could be allocated? Well, this issue of reserves policy is a, a debate in all charities. Uh, how, what proportion of your operating expenses do you set aside as a reserve? 
In some cases, it's three months. In other cases, it's six months. In other cases, it's longer. In our case, if we were to take, uh, say, six months, you'd be talking about roughly 300,000 or something of, of the reserve for the Paris office costs. Uh, so that would be a very minimum reserve, I think, level. But then you'd have to take into account other factors like um, redundancy, has to, you'd have to retain the, uh, the employee fund, the 340,000. Uh, so that's add that to the uh, 300, you're up to 640. And then um, you have to assume that if you close down your operations, uh, what are the costs? What costs would arise? So you're talking about certainly not less than a million euros, I would think, as a reserves policy. But it's a, it's not a very exact science, but it's of that magnitude, I would think. Uh, thank you, Larry, for your very good presentation. Um, just one small minor question, I suppose. The, um, I note that on the expenses for the ITPVs, ITPVs and coordinators, you only reflect the, the actuals Sorry. on the expenses for the ITPVs and coordinators. You reflected only the, uh, the, the actual expenditures, not, but not, not the, uh, the budgets, uh, you know, just to reflect whether the, the variances and also, you know, that could give you an indication of, of um, why the variances or whether the, some of the ITPVs and coordinators are expending more than naturally or whatever, for whatever reason they, they provide to You're talking to about that, that line there, is it? Uh, no, no, or not, not, not on the breakdown. Right. That's, 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 that's the, co the total. But on the breakdown of the various um, uh, coordinators and the ITPVs, for the various areas. That's the other that's one, yeah. yeah. I, I note that you, you only reflect the actual figures, but no, um, no budgets, no budgets right, yeah. and okay. no variances yeah, as, yeah. To, as to, you know, to reflect yeah. the, the various um, yeah, there is differences. Total, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Because that, that would indicate and show us why, you know, some of the uh, okay. expenditures are more or less yeah. for whatever reasons they, they, they provide. Okay. We can, we can that do could, that. That could help, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose on the on the um, on the um, uh, the other one, the uh, the uh, um, SSDP plus, it it wouldn't be prudent to do that or difficult to do that for some of the countries. It's very difficult to to predetermine what uh, expenses are going to be in future because yeah, some countries true. you never know what the uh, yes. cost of going there and yes. the cost of uh, of. of you know, accommodation, etc. So it's very difficult to determine. So that that one I understand, but maybe the ITPVs ones could be. You could yeah. do that okay. in, in the future. Yeah. Certainly, thanks, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Um, I think this is just a matter of terminology, but social charges is that leave entitlements or something? Uh, no, it's the, it's the payroll taxes that employees in what we pay, have to pay for our employees in, in France. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Larry, um, and sincere thanks for a fantastic presentation that you've done here this morning. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank you personally as National President of Ireland for the work that you do in your community and the extensive work that you do. I'd just like to, to say that for the record. I uh, just have one uh, simple question, um, which I wouldn't be clear on. Uh, just in relation to the fixed assets, um, was the fixed asset that you produced there in relation to the headquarters, is that the initial sum that was spent on, on the headquarters? Yes, that 2.6 figure that I mentioned is the initial cost uh, of the Rue de Londres, approximately. Uh, that's, and, and partly that was financed from the uh, foundation, this, this one here. 
So the balance, roughly 1.5 million, was financed by the Council General itself. So that came from the, the members. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank okay. you. Thanks very much. Thank you for your presentation. It is really a comment about the budget from the ITVPs. So, from the way you showed it to us, everything is correct, of course, because we're presenting a total. And this will bring, of course, a higher mobility also to work on these vice presidents. So maybe you should really have a budget, but an individual budget. Because the way it is stated in your presentation, that's right, that's the correct slide. This value here, we know that it will be for the whole work for all vice presidencies and also the coordinators, am I right? So I think this will bring a better mobility of the work to the vice presidents, because one might perhaps spend more than another. So I believe that this will be better um, rather than the de detailing, basically, by breakdown, in fact. That there are two budget leaders, if you like, uh, in relation to this, this part of the budget, this, this amount here. And Renato, some years ago, set up the idea that this is a, a, a global sum for those two categories. If there is underspend in one area, it can be used at the discretion of the, the uh, Vice President General to allocate to another area where it is necessary. And that flexibility, I think, has been helpful. I gather the ITVPs have found it helpful. Thank you. Yes. Larry, Ralph, here. Sorry. Um, here, here, Larry. <laughs> anyway, a question I had, and this may be uh, under the CIAD report, but a significant amount is reserved dedicated funds to the Philippines and, and Haiti. And, and two years ago, I think, at a CIAD meeting, David Berenger suggested that if they weren't going to spend that money, a, a good portion was a U.S. donation, we would request returning that to us. Um, and I, I wonder the process for doing that, because it's certainly, we would probably put it right back into a fund that would be at the discretion of the CIAD. Uh, committee, but it seems uh, uh, not prudent to have, I, I think almost half of those reserve CIAD funds were for two countries that, that makes them inaccessible, and, and maybe the donors of those funds, one of them being the U.S., would have the opportunity to, to uh, request them back so they can be re-released for other purposes. Um, I understand that in both cases there are, there are projects under active consideration, particularly in relation to the Philippines. There are always projects being presented or prepared for CIAD to consider. I don't know quite the up-to-date situation at the moment, but Philippines is active and the money is, it will be used. Haiti is a different situation because of the weakness of the society there. You're, you're, yeah. But nonetheless, we have been able to distribute some funds to Haiti to, to projects that the Daughters of Charity operate, sometimes in conjunction with the local society, but the Daughters taking responsibility. And we need to do more in that regard. And if anybody who has association with Haiti has some suggestions for the use of funds for projects in Haiti, I think CIAD would be more than interested in receiving the, 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 the uh, suggestions. I can, uh, je, je peux, uh, comme vous le savez, j'étais uh, président de la CIAD jusqu'à il n'y a pas longtemps. The question of the budget in the Philippines. In Philippines, um, there was a very uh, a lot of projects. They they took time to come back. Finally, they were carried out. So these are quality projects. So uh, we have spent correctly the money. Uh, a, a big part of the money, but there is still money. Uh, there is still money, but uh, it, it 
took time to uh, to to put these uh, uh, projects in motions. As for the CID, I'm, I'm I'm really I know this this uh, dossier. So probably they will have in the position of spending all the money uh, uh, they received for the for quality projects. It's not the same for the, to all the countries, uh, beneficiary countries, because uh, there was a question that came up. Uh, for example, Vanuatu, we had a lot of money and not many projects, really few projects. So in this case, uh, they, they practically they don't have projects. So, so we have uh, asked again the uh, donating countries, for example, Ireland, uh, to uh, reassign these funds to other uh, other zones, right? I just I just want to express my profound gratitude uh, to the United States and Australia because you in addition to the donations, to the regular donations that you do to CGI, you pay the expenses of two ITVPs, Frank Brazil and Mike, so thank you a lot, because this generosity done by you, Australia and United States, uh, help CGI to reduce costs and to use more the money to the other 10 ITVPs that deserve more this money. So I want to uh, ask to the people a big applause to these two countries. Another question. Is there any other question about the financial report? I don't see any other, so I propose to vote at the resolution that you have in your files. And I'm going to read it. The annual accounts of the exercise of the General Council are closed in 31st December 2018. The General President uh, submitted to the uh, permanent section the accounts of this financial year, uh, finishing the 31st of December. The permanent section uh, had a, a, a detailed examination of these um, accounts. So uh, it approves the accounts of this uh, exercise as it has been submitted uh, uh, with, with a, a surplus, important surplus that you can see in the, the screen. So I would like to know if somebody is against. If somebody uh, prefers abstention, so it is unanimously approved. So thank you very much. And of course, I congratulate our general treasurer for the great work he has done. Thank you so much. <laughs>